I'm Cheryl Waters. You're listening to The Midday Show on KEXP, where the music matters. And I am out in the gathering space right now. There are live humans holding instruments in front of me. It's one of my favorite bands. I know it's many of yours favorite, too. They're in Seattle right now playing live on KEXP. Welcome, Waxahachie.
You're listening to Waxahachie live on KEXP. I take flight on borrowed time. I was once terrified of hikes. I say a prayer. I look down. i 
Waxahachie live gracing the stage here in the KEXP gathering space, playing songs from St. Cloud, which came out in March of 2020. And Katie Crutchfield of Waxahachie is sitting right across from me now. Katie, that was so gorgeous. Thank you so much. Is it like riding a bike, playing shows, doing radio sessions again? You know, yeah. It's like riding a bike after you haven't ridden a bike in like 50 years. <laughs> That's about what it feels like. Like you kind of you kind of know what you're doing, but you know. <laughs> well, you've been talking about this new record for a very long time. In fact, I can hardly call it a new record anymore. It's already a classic. It was Aww. on so many people's favorite records of 2020 list. And you've certainly been thinking about it and talking about it for a super long time. You have to be elated to be out on tour, finally playing it for a live audience. Yeah, it feels really cool. It feels really, really great. You know, Um, I think at this point, we're all so used to like COVID safety protocols that that doesn't feel weird. And touring is like, you know, obviously so natural to all of us that it just feels pretty much nothing but fun and great. That's great. You sort of officially kicked off the St. Cloud tour um, just just at the end of last month. And you started in Kansas City, which is your new home. And in mid-October, you're going to end in Philadelphia, which has also been home to you. So that's kind of a sweet little journey. But you also were doing some shows here and there, making me totally envious playing Newport and Mass Mocha. And I am wondering how the crowds have been. I mean, people are so psyched. They were hungry for live music in a way people talk about what music means to them all the time and but I think that we really never felt it like we have now well I, I've certainly felt that in the few shows that we've done so far um and then of course like yeah Newport and you know the vibe of Newport is so good and it was just it was such a cool thing to like really feel that palpable like energy of people being that excited and it had been so long so it's been really to be on the receiving end of that kind of like excitement and gratitude has been very cool. (laughs) Well I was really happy you and Kevin really embraced online performing early and a lot of people jumped on board with that and thank God you know that we had Um, that music still in our lives in some way. But I was so happy that you were one of the early people to start doing those regular shows for fans. And it was really a special and intimate way to connect with you as an artist. Um, You know, you were really having a conversation that was very different with your fans than you can have on stage, which is also a very special way to have a conversation. But what was that time like for you? I mean, what did you kind of take away from that yeah, it was really cool. Cheryl, was, you were actually a guest on our, <laughs> on our little <laughs> weekly rodeo. That's very what we called it. Very spontaneous. Yeah, it was always very spontaneous. Um, yeah, it was really special and cool. I really hope that at some point down the line we can recreate it somehow um, because I think we both got so much out of that kind of connection with our fans. And, like, you know, we would bring people into our little Instagram show and – and meet people and talk to people. And, um, it was, it was really cool. I mean, obviously, yeah, when you perform live, it's not really a back and forth. It's kind of like, this is just the performance. And if it ever is a back and forth, then usually something's gone horribly wrong. Um, but yeah, we, we loved it. And, um, it, it brought a lot of like sweetness and levity to the sort of heaviness that was, you know, last year. Well, as I said a little bit ago, I know you've been talking about this record for a super long time, and we even chatted on a live at home session, my very first one, uh, Mm -hmm. back at the beginning of the pandemic. But uh, hopefully you're gaining brand new fans every single day and with every event that you do. So I do want to talk a little bit about the record, which has meant so much to so many people. You said after touring your last record out in the storm that you were afraid that people might assume that you were like a rock music person. And I find it nearly impossible, actually, to categorize Waxahachie. (laughs) What's your personal description of this project? Yeah, you know, I think something that feels really good for me is that um, kind of from the offset, I always wanted to be difficult to describe. And I've always sort of, uh, I I, want to be genreless. That's sort of the always been my desire and and really just to find ways to like lift up the songs in um, in kind of like the most 
productive, good way possible. So, you know, I think this current iteration of Waxahachie is obviously really warm and kind of more Americana leaning and what what will come next, really, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, I think the journey from out in the storm to St. Cloud is, was so, such a such a strong shift. Um, so the fact that my fans seem to stick with me is <laughs> very cool. And yeah, I just really like to um, keep it difficult to describe. Well, and it does have a beautiful warm sound. And you actually went to a warm location to record the record, Sonic Ranch, down in Texas with Mm -hmm. producer Brad Cook. And that's different from where you've recorded past records, like in Brooklyn and Philadelphia. How did that scenic change affect the record, would you say? Um, You know, I didn't totally know what I was getting into with Sonic Ranch. I sort of could picture it in my head, but I had no idea how much of a role it would end up playing. Like just that kind of beautiful West Texas landscape was like the perfect backdrop. Um, And, you know, you, you can... Put an, get an idea in your head of what your record's going to sound like when you go to make it, but you really never know. So I actually do think that the setting that you're in often ends up lending itself to that. And forever, that will be the backdrop of St. Cloud in my head. Well, speaking of the setting, I mean, shortly before the pandemic, you settled in Kansas City. And if you had been living your pre-pandemic life, you probably would have just you know, settled down there for a short period of time and then would have been off again. But you ended up spending a huge chunk of time there, more than you've probably spent anywhere in a long time. Do you think that that will color your sounds for songs that you're writing now or in the future? Yeah, I certainly think so. I've like really um, found living in the middle of the country to be pretty fruitful creatively. I think Kevin has too. Like we really um, have have been pleasantly surprised by that move. I think it it really felt at the time for both of us pre-pandemic, it felt really like, all right, this will just be our landing pad and then we'll be, you know, all over the world all the time. And having to really sort of, um, you know, settle there uh, has been really cool. I think that it, I, I certainly think it'll color what I do next. Well, you also brought in some new faces to work on St. Cloud with you. Members of the band are Bonnie Doon, Mm -hmm. who you've brought with you here today. (laughs) And what about your artistry draws you to them? Because I know you have a love affair with this band and these (laughs) musicians. I famously do, yes. Um, Well, you know, it's really cool. I brought them in to do a tour with me in 2018 um, to open. And, you know, kind of last minute asked them to just play as my backing band because otherwise I would have been performing solo. We actually, we played a show in Seattle on that tour. Um, And hearing their interpretations of my old songs just really like woke something up inside of me. I had been writing some songs that would become St. Cloud songs, but was, you know, had a lot of frustrating creative energy, but like wasn't sure um, where to put that. And that really was like step one of what became St. Cloud. So I had to bring them with me into the studio and ask them to be in my band forever. (laughs) Well, you sound amazing. It sounds like you've been playing together forever, like family. I'm just pinching myself (laughs) that you're here today. I'm so giddy. And some of your influence on this album are quite clear. I know, uh, speaking of love affairs with musicians, you listen to Williams Mm -hmm. and Gillian Welch. But I also know you spent time listening to SZA, Tierra Weck, and Fiona Apple. What Can you trace any of the sounds on the record directly to them? Well, I think specifically with SZA and Fiona, um, a big, de- not a departure, but a big shift I wanted to make was I wanted the record to be more vocally challenging. I knew I could do it um, and had never quite shown off that part of my, um, you know, voice. And I think listening to those two women, like, their albums and how they sing and their how they um, sort of write more unpredictable vocal melodies, that was something I really wanted to take into this record so that I feel like um, now that I'm on tour and I'm singing these songs every night, I may be like, uh, <laughs> what have I done to myself? But um, it's, been, it's been a cool journey, like just really, um, you know, flexing <laughs> with my voice. It keeps it fun and interesting for you. It really does. And it's super fun and interesting for us. <laughs> Well, you honor some important relationships throughout this record. Uh, Some of your closest friends Mm -hmm. on the song Witches and your partner Kevin Morby on Can't Do Much and The Eye. What was it like experiencing sharing these songs with those people? 
Um, it was great. I mean, it was really, really sweet. You know, I, I feel like, um, I've, I'm not sure I've ever quite had the experience of writing a song about a person and have had it been, um, positive and like a happy thing. <laughs> it's usually like, if you made it into my songs, then, you know, we're not on speaking terms. Um, so now I feel like it was really sweet and, and made me really happy to share. And, um, I think, yeah, like warmed the hearts of those who, uh, were the subjects. Well, speaking of those dear friends, we should give a little shout out to Lindsay Jordan of Snail Mail, who's just released an incredible song this week, and I can't wait to hear the full record. Oh, don't even get me started on the full record. It is so good. I'm so proud of her, and just, I was I was beaming with Bride yesterday. You've talked about needing to get into a certain headspace to sit down and kind of write a record, and I'm wondering if you can walk me through what that looks like for you. Yeah, you know, I feel like I work um, off of big urges so I can go long periods of time and not think about writing a song and then suddenly I have like a really um, fruitful moment. I think I, I used to be really precious about that getting in that headspace and finding that sort of quiet alone perf the room is exactly 70 degrees and everything every chore in the house has been done and you know and I have my coffee and my water and my tea and I, are you, you know, a Capricorn I absolutely am a Capricorn yeah. <laughs> and so are you right yes <laughs> okay. that I feel safer knowing that um <laughs> I um I feel like I've tried to let that go a little bit a little bit um and just let myself off the hook when it's when I feel intuitively like it's not time to work and when it is time just relax and let it happen you know so I've I've been trying to be more laid back it doesn't always work out but <laughs> well and you've also talked about being in a really healthy place both mentally and physically for this record and that kind of flips the script on the sort of tortured musician writing interesting music. Is that a message that you want people to hear, especially other musicians? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I can only really speak for myself and what has worked for me, but I, you know, the minute that I kind of really like truly let that myth go, um, because that's certainly something that I subscribe to for a long time. Um, the minute I really let that go, I feel like, um, it did me a lot of good and I was really able to access some like serious truth within myself. Um, and, you know, I feel like I made my favorite thing I've ever made after I kind of got to that, came to that conclusion. So, Well, I know that in the past you wrestled with your Southern identity and your affinity for country music. And what changed for you to embrace that? You know, I think, honestly, it's funny because I've been on such a journey with that. Um, I think that having like such a newfound, like, absolute love. Like I just fell in love with Lucinda Williams and her, all of her records. Um, so I think that finding like cool country music, um, sort of helped me, um, wrap my mind around the fact that country music is cool. Um, and so I think from there I have now, now I'm like nineties country is the best moment of pop music in the history of music. <laughs> now I've gone all the way to the other side and I'm like, country music is the coolest. But um, yeah, it took me a while to get there, but Lucinda 100% shepherded me into that headspace. She's amazing. She is. I'll bow down to Lucinda <laughs> Williams. Well, now that you're finally playing these songs live, which came out a year and a half ago, and of course you wrote them, you know, way before that, how have the songs changed over time or how have the songs changed you? I mean, are they telling you something new now? You know, it's so funny. I mean, Kevin and I talk about this a lot. I think that before you release a record, the record really belongs to you. And the minute that you put it out, it doesn't belong to you anymore. And so I've really been feeling that, but in a more like abundant kind of way. I feel like it really belongs to everyone. And you know, I know it was reflected back to me that um, some of the subject matter on the album, I could have never predicted this, but, you know, really struck a lot of chords with people, like, in regards to how they were feeling about the pandemic. And so I feel like I walk with that now a little bit. And when we perform them live, it feels cathartic in that way, because, you know, I had a hard year last year, too, just like anybody else. So that part of it is kind of cool. And I think really lends itself to, like, the collective experience of live music, which is nice. 
Well, it's such a pleasure to have you here today sharing this live music with us. Thank you for making time always for KEXP and give our love to Kevin. Yay, will do. And enjoy the rest of this tour you're playing tonight here in Seattle at the Moore Theater, tomorrow in Tacoma at the Spanish Ballroom. And it seems like you've got lots of fun things ahead. I know you're doing the Wilco shows in Mexico Mm -hmm. in January. That's always been on a... A, a wish list for me. Yay. Maybe it'll happen in 2022. I hope so. That's a great lineup as always. Oh, yeah. Well, have fun and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It's Waxahachie live on KEXP at KEXP. Wee! Awesome. Oh, my Yay. gosh. That was so Thanks, great. Guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So fun.